Hi guys, welcome back to Paint and Read with Ting. Uh, today I'm gonna read for you chapter 7 and 8. Hope you're gonna enjoy it. And yeah, if you subscribe to me, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. If you're not subscribed yet, maybe you will listen my audio and watch my video and you're gonna enjoy it and you will decide to subscribe. Uh, like, don't forget to write down comments what you really think of it. And I'm gonna work, keep working on my Nefertiti, on my Diamond Arco painting. I did unboxing, check on my videos, you're gonna see unboxing and kidding up. Started this painting on 13th, and I think so today is 16th, but wasn't working today so much, just a little bit. Uh, okay guys, watch the video and see you on the end. Chapter 7. The Midnight Hour The glow from the clock face of Big Ben sh shone through the tall window behind Tom's bed. Suddenly Tom couldn't see shadows flashing through the children's ward. Figures were moving in the darkness. Tom was frightened and couldn't help but gasp. Ah! Just then he felt an, a hand on his mouth silencing him. This made Tom even more frightened. Shh, he said someone. Don't make a sound. We don't want anyone waking up Matron. The hand was soft and fl fleshy and smelled of chocolate and Tom's eyes adjust to the dark. He realized it was indeed George's. Tom's eyes darted over the Matron's office. The lady was still fast asleep in her chair, her head resting on her desk, snoring away. Not that one sound, repeated George. Tom nodded his agreement to the boy who slowly removed his hand. Then Tom looked behind his tower towards the giant clock. He could see across the rooftops of London. It was approaching midnight. Soon it was clear that it wasn't just George who was out of his bed. Romy, Robin was also there, pushing Amber along in a wheelchair. The wheelchair was old and rusty and even had a flat tire. Because Robin had bandages over his eyes, he couldn't see a thing. Amber's ha bandaged legs banged straight in the wall. Ow! she cried. Shh! said Robin and George. Tom found himself joining in to Let me, said George. He guided Robin to one side and then took over the pushing of Amber. Robin put his hand on George's shoulder and like a rather pitiful Kong, the trio stuffed out the ward, shuffled out the ward. Where are you going? asked Tom. Shh! The three children re replied, Can you please stop telling me to shush all the time? protested Tom. Just go to sleep, new boy, he said Amber. But, Tom protested, You are not in a gang, added George. But I really want to be in your gang, pleaded Tom. Well, you can't be, mate, replied George. But it's not fair, moaned Tom. Please, can you turn the volume down, dear? snapped Robin. Yes, be quiet, said Amber. I'm being quiet, replied Tom. You are not being quiet. You are talking all that not being quiet. We all have to be quiet, said Amber. Then you be quiet, said Tom. Oh, for God's sake, will you please be quiet, said Robin a little too loud. All the children's head turns towards the matron's office at the end of the walk. Matron stirred a little at the noise but didn't wake up. There was collective sigh of relief. The all moo shouldn't wake up for a couple of hours at least, said George. There was one of my spe special snoozy pillar that Dr. Loopers gave me pushed inside each of those chocolates. Well done for rem remembering she liked the purple ones the best, said Amber. No point ruin a whole tin of chocolates was there, replied George with a smirk. You crafty devil, said Tom. 
Why, thank you, replied Robin, bowing his head as if for applause. No, new boy, said Amber. Go back to bed right now. And remember, you did not say a thing. Let's go. With that, the three friends trundled out of the double door. At that moment, the chim chimes of Big Ben started. Bong, bong. Bong, bong. Midnight. Tom listened and counted. Twelve bongs. It was midnight. The boy was sitting up in his bed. Now it was just him and Sally left in the children's ward. He looked over to her bed. She was asleep as she had been since Tom arrived in the ward quite a few hours ago. Despite his swollen head, Tom felt restless. There was no way he wanted to miss out all the fun. So he took a giant leap into the unknown and decided to follow them. Tom felt like a super spy, but the feeling didn't last. As the boy eased himself out of the bed, his left foot went straight into the bed pot on the floor. Clank, 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 clank. Chapter 8. A Promise Clang, clang, clang. Tom couldn't prise his foot out of the bedpan. The boy wanted to shout out in the frustration, but knew this would only make matters worse. matters worse. The last thing he wanted to do was wake up Matroom, who was still snoring away in her office. The boy looked over to Sally's bed in the far corner of the ward. She was lying in a bed, a glint of light from Big Ben just catching the top of her he bald head. Tom didn't want to wake her up either. At least the bed pan wasn't full, he thought. As quickly and quietly as he could, Tom reached down and prized his foot from the bedpan. Then he tiptoed out of the children's ward. To his annoyance, his bare feet made squelching noises on the shiny floor. Squilch, 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 squilch. As his fingers touched the heavy swing door at the entrance of the ward, he was second from freedom. Just then a voice made Tom jump out of his skin. So, new boy, where are you going? The boy, the boy turned around. It was Sally. Nowhere. He lied. You can't be going nowhere. You must be going somewhere. Please just go back to sleep, pleaded Tom. You will wake up my true. Oh no, they, don't this, they do this every night. That nasty woman won't wake up for hours. I really think you should go, go get some rest. Boring. It's not boring, replied Tom. Now come on, go back to sleep. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. Come on, don't take me with you, said Sally. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. Why? protested the girl. The reason Tom didn't think Sally should come was that she looked weak. He was worried that she would slow him down, but he didn't want to say that. That would hurt her feelings, so he said something else instead. Look, Sally, I'm just going to catch up with the others and tell them they need to come straight back to bed. Liar. No, I'm not, he said with a little too much gusto, which made him seem like he was lying. You are lying. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Tom shook his head a little too vigorously. I know you must think I'm not going to keep up with your or something, said Sally. No. Yes, come on, admit it. I'm not stupid. No, thought Tom. This girl is smart, super smart. There weren't any girls in Tom's boarding school, so he had hardly met any. Tom hadn't thought that this girl could be smart. The boy immediately had a feeling that this girl could beat him at everything. Tom didn't like that feeling. Now it is not honest, lied the boy. Then as he stood there looking at her, his curiosity got the better of him. Sally, can I ask you something? You can ask. Why have you got no hair? I decided to shave it all off so I could look exactly like a boiled egg, replied Sally as quickly as Flash. Tom chuckled. Whatever, the girl might have lost, it wasn't her sense of humor. It's because of your illness? 
yes and no. I don't understand. It's actually the treatment that did this. The treatment? Tom couldn't believe it. If the treatment did this, then what did the illness do? But you are going to get better, thought. The girl struggled. I don't know. Then she quickly changed the subject. Do you think you will ever recover from a cricket ball hitting you on the head? Tom chucked. I hope not. If I do, then I have to go back to school. I wish I could go back to school. What? The boy had never heard another child say such a thing. I have been in this place for months now. I miss my school, even the horrible teachers. Even though Tom had only just met Sally, it was, a, it was as if he was talking to an old friend. Then the boy realized he had to leave right now if he was to have... If he was to have chance of catching up with the others. I have to go. And you definitely aren't going to take me? Tom looked at Sally. She looked too unwell to get out of bed. Let alone go on some crazy adventure. Tom felt guilty to be leaving her behind, but he felt he had no choice. Maybe next time, lied the boy. Sally smiled. Look, Tom, I understand. The others have never invited me. You go, but I want you to promise me something. What? he asked. I want you to tell me all about the night adventures when you go back. I will, he said. Promise? A promise. Tom looked Sally right in the eyes as he said. He really didn't want to let his new friend down. Then the boy pushed open the heavy swing doors. Light spilled in from the corridor. Just before he disappeared from sight, Sally said, I hope it is an awfully big adventure. He smiled at the girl before he pushed the doors open and was swallowed up by the lights. Back everyone. Hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget to write down in the comment section below what do you think. And yeah guys, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, I will put in the description box down below details about this painting where you can purchase it, details where you can get pens like that. That comes from the TJ's pens and the details about my Ko-Fi account if you want to support my channel as well. Of course, not expected, but very appreciated. And yeah, guys, for this video, for today, for this video, it's gonna be it. See you probably on the next one. Let's see what's gonna happen on chapter 9 and 10. Love ya! Bye! Have a fantastic day!